Привет, товарищи! I am Party Elite, and we're finally kicking off my Phantom Doctrine Let's Play. I've been waiting to cover this game for so very long, and I'm excited to get started. If you haven't seen my two-hour preview video, this game is a blend of XCOM-style turn-based tactical strategy gaming and the Cold War era. So we're seeing a lot of espionage elements being used. There's intelligence, there's counterintelligence, there's moles, investigations, interrogations, all sorts of really cool stuff, and I'm really pumped to, to start this Let's Play. Now, I will say I did receive a free copy from the developers, full disclosure, but I chased after them for it because I wanted to cover this game. This type of genre is my jam, so very glad to have got it. Thank you, devs, very much. I will say also the game releases on the 14th of August, and if you're interested in buying the game yourselves, I just humbly request that maybe you do it through the Humble Bundle affiliate link in the description down below and under the eye at the top right corner of the screen. Doing so not only supports the channel, but it also supports charity, and of course you get the game as well. Now, enough of an introduction, let's kick things off, I've been waiting so long, let's not waste any more time, we're gonna go in regular mode here, and I'm going to play on medium difficulty, that's the benchmark it says. Uh, hard is ramped up, but honestly this game is hard enough as it is So I think we'll stick to medium and have a good time The way we'll give ourselves our own difficulty is by role-playing like I like to do on this channel and going in on Iron Man mode That means there's no save scumming. There's no, you know, regretting a decision and loading up a saved game or something and We're also going subtitles all subtitles because I only speak so many languages and I think it'll make for easier viewing all right, and next up, if you couldn't tell with the introduction or the title, we are going in as the KGB because, let's face it, channel's name, Party Elite. Colors, red and yellow. It's kind of a match made in heaven, so we're going in as codename Kodiak. Hunt traitors of the motherland as a highly decorated KGB counterintelligence operative. Sounds good to me, and our name, I actually have one in mind. Russian speakers in the comments can let me know how terribly I am butchering this. I don't speak Russian, in case you couldn't tell, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's Vichirinka Elita, could be off, but it means Party Elite. It's a literal translation of Party Elite, uh, so it's probably not even an accurate <laughs> translation, because thanks Google Translate. Now, I do have a bit of an idea as to how I want my 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 dude, how I want Vichirinka here to look. We're going to go with this portrait. It's kind of the closest, to be honest. I wish the portraits were uh, generated after, uh, like based on your portrait, but let me l let me know if you guys recognize who we're making before I actually finish making him. I think it'll be pretty obvious almost right away. I'm gonna go in with an athletic build, I think that's about right. Hair, this is where it gets super obvious, I think. We're bald, which is good. We're gonna go with, whoops, clean shaved as well. I think it's already getting pretty clear. Clothes, if it's not obvious yet, then we're gonna go that. And instead of chinos, we need ourselves some suit pants. Make them as dark as they can be. Alright, we're getting there. Gloves. Um, I'm tempted to do the leather gloves because I like the sheen and the little button, but I think tactical gloves are more fitting. We are, after all, a tactical operative, so we're gonna go with tactical gloves. And then shoes, I'm pretty sure Oxfords are the best match for what I'm going for. So Oxfords in black. Take a look at this beautiful gentleman here. Uh, headgear, not gonna go with anything here. There's some pretty neat options, but I'm no mafioso or a milady type individual. So rather than getting ourselves any kind of hat, we're gonna go with nothing. And we could get ourselves some cool shades, or we could get ourselves, where is it? An eye patch, which makes me want to do like a big boss run or something. Uh, but for now, we're not doing big boss. We're not doing big boss. We're doing somebody else, though. I'm sure some of you have already put it together. We're going to give ourselves an earpiece as well, because we're professionals here. We're professionals, all right? And details. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of any of the scars that are available. They're sort of your generic RPG scar types, and I've never been a fan of those generic scars, so we're not going to go with any of those. As for tattoos, there's no option of a barcode at the nape or on the back of our head, so we're going to go with uh, no tattoos. And if that comment didn't make it obvious, I don't know what else will. But yeah, there is our... Uh, there, there is our beautiful selves, Vichirinka Elita, codename Kodiak. Let's kick this off. Let's get this party started, as it were.
his Golf Yankee Juliet uniform, reporting contraband seized. Understood. Break off patrol. Head back to base. Tavarish, HMS Conqueror Narushal Radio Malchani. Sto? Pokazati Rashifrovko. A bistri. Nimedlena Vaslach Moskvu. Nimedlena. We got intel from Vladivostok. It's big, Steve. Langley seen it yet? No. Should they? Hell yeah, but use the network. We don't want anyone listening in. First the British, and now the Americans. Was there anyone else you wanted to involve in our plans? I am handling it, Valhalla. Get out. Both of you. Your incompetence has exposed us. Now Iceberg is in jeopardy. Doing all of this in the open was your idea. True. It was a simple plan that any fool could have executed. And you failed. Gentlemen, this problem is easily solved. Traitors! Now, now, don't shout. It's bad for your heart. All right, the plot does thickened, mainly thickened. Wow, English. <laughs> I, I was going to say I don't speak Russian. I don't even speak English, apparently. Uh, but yeah, so Executive Order Utah Alpha 426. I don't know what the Soviet equivalents are. Probably like Yuri Anna 426. We're over at Vladivostok for this one. Agent Yukon divulged secret information to the Americans. His arrest warrant was signed Patriot and accompanied by codes with the highest level of clearance. So someone important to Moscow must consider his crimes very serious. As an officer of the Space Forces Directorate, Gukos, Yukon will be handled by the local KGB counterintelligence unit. Myself. Primary objective is to arrest Yukon and then evacuate upon completion of main objectives. All right, let's go. Просто не арестуешь. Хочу увидеть, кто еще появится. Наверное, ГРУ уже на месте. Проволка речь. Что случилось? Милиционеры только что вбежали в здание. Не могу больше говорить. Не думаю, что эти менты здесь официально. Я тоже. Подготовьтесь к стрельбе. Постараемся не оставлять беспорядка. Слишком много бумаг. All right, so I might actually learn Russian through this game. All the Russian I know is from video games and movies, so hey, who knows? I might come out with a new language. Now, any of you that are completely unfamiliar with the XCOM style of game, hopefully you'll pick up some things as we go along. There's way too much to explain as far as that subgenre is concerned. Those of you who are unfamiliar with Phantom Doctrine, I'd really recommend watching that two-hour video of mine, only because while I will explain things in this one, I won't be going as deep. Um, with that said, let's kick things off. First things first, you want to scout around and sort of get an idea of what's going on in this mission. We have our objective, which is to arrest Yukon, and he's up all the way over here. So we have to move up over here and arrest him, and we also caught a glimpse of this little piece of intel over here. Across the map, you're going to find intel when you're on tactical missions, and the value of intel is that once you're in the uh, overworld view, like the strategic layer, Oh, there's another piece there. Uh, but once you're in the strategic layer, you're going to use that intel for various things, for catching moles, for tracing enemy agents, things like that. And another piece there. Uh, so you'll want to collect as much of the intel you can, and you'll want to potentially arrest individuals, like the cases here, to potentially, in I'm saying potentially, uh, to interrogate them and uh, get more information that way. There's also typically like loot and stuff, so lots of interesting stuff to be done. Uh, first things first is to scout. We'll want to go upstairs, obviously our objective is upstairs, but there are these two cameras that are covering both of these staircases. So what we we'll want to do is find a way, find a terminal where we can turn these cameras off. Now, there is this off-site situation over here where it's likely to be. And there's also this door here that we can get through. So we're going to try and do both of those. Uh, Kodiak is our main man. He is the main character. If he dies, it's game over. And because we're in Iron Man mode, it is truly game over. Theremin is here. Indigo is here. So Indigo, let's get you moving up this way. I want Kodiak to move in through the 
front doors like a boss. Theremin, you're gonna go in first because uh, the boss never goes in first. And we wanna avoid being caught out in this red zone over here. We're not in disguise or anything. So if we get caught within these uh, areas, we'll be trespassing and we'll trigger the alarms. Right now we're in infiltration mode, so we're pretty free to move as long as we don't do anything too suspicious, as long as we don't pop shots and we don't get uh, caught within these red zones. So let's just tuck up to here. And I'll tell you why I'm being so cautious. Да, comrade. That was exactly my thinking. All right, no more Russian or Russian accents, I think. Um, but yeah, the reason why I'm so cautious is because as we saw while scouting around, there were these gaps, and you can actually see through these gaps, and you can actually see if there are any enemies posted on different levels, or, you know, obviously it works in reverse as well. They can see you. So again, with uh, Kodiak as well, we're going to move up to... Well, we can only move up to the edge here. So we're going to do that. And uh, it looks like we've actually been given an optional objective here, so... We were right. Well, we were kind of right. I thought the terminal was going to be over here, but the terminal's here, so Theremin here is going to push the doors and, and shut that off. Usually you're not actually told, or at least in later missions from my two-hour playthrough, uh, you're not told where these items are. Um, you, you just know that they exist as things on the map. Uh, I think you can scout them out based on uh, your strategic layer activities, though. Uh, before we go there, let's get Indigo moving in. And now Patience is the name of the game. It's like Phantom Doctrine, and then the subtitle should be Patience is a Virtue, because you need to play super cautiously. I moved up here, and I opened that door rather than just barge through, because as you can see, this is a restricted zone as well, and there is an individual in here, and he does have a patrol. We can see his patrol by hovering over him. Uh, it looks like he's going to move back that way. He looks like a civilian. I don't think he's an actual agent. But uh, we're going to stay outside the restricted zone, we're going to let him get over there, and then we'll deal with him afterwards again. Patience is the name of the game, and with Theremin, we're going to do something similar over here. I'm going to move you right up to the door. Oh dear! That's not exactly what I meant, kind of risky. Let's pop this door open. And looks like we're in the clear, so we can move in and do this. Looks like there's something in here as well, by the way. There is loot across the map, equipment, armor, guns, etc. And I actually was... Duh, duh. I actually was a little careless there. There are windows over here, and I can see through the windows to see that this place looks pretty clear of anything valuable. Uh, but that means that if there were any enemy agents in here, they would be able to see me as well. Uh, so, yeah, whoops. Uh, we need to make sure we check that out. The stairs are clear. I don't have a clear enough view of upstairs, though. Um, what I could try and do is move off to the side over here and try to get a better view of this angle. And I could move Theremin off to the side here, get a better view of this angle, and then move up. I think it's a little too early for heartbeat sensors and the like, but those are pieces of equipment that you can unlock later. And uh, since I don't have that, I have to play ultra cautiously. So, again, as long as we stay out of this... I don't, wanna, I don't want to push through this trespassing area. I wonder if that's... Oh, that is really dangerous. Looks like we're in the clear up here, actually. Should I just roll up? Oh, it's so much fog of war. And where, where does this stairwell go? Oh. Okay. Okay, how patient can I be? Uh, to those of you that don't know, patience is not my strong suit. <laughs> I'm very tempted to just rush up these stairs, even though I can't see anything over here, and I can't see anything over here, and there is a stairwell over here that's easily accessible, so I feel like I should spend a little bit more time uh, in getting to know my environment before I just dive up there. Just in case. Now these guys, civilians are often tagged as enemies, or I think they're always tagged as enemies, and I think that's to keep you on your toes as to how they'll move and if they'll actually report you or not. Looks like he doesn't move anywhere next turn, and his cone of vision is just straightforward, so I should be able to push in and check this out. Trespassing, but he's not gonna notice me. Yeah, he's a uh, very tunnel vision, this guy. And we're also gonna move up and pop this door open. He moved up here. I forget which way he was facing. I think he was facing this equipment, so I should be fine if I move here and pop this door open. Let's do it, come on in to go. Move there, pop this door open. All right, we're good. Nothing to pick up over here, but we can't move until next turn, that's fine. Theremin, we're going to open this up, see what loot it has for me. 
All right, Model 870, light armor. So that's three out of five. There's actually two more spots for loot. Um, just want to make sure I'm being thorough here and not missing anything. I'd like to play as thoroughly as possible. Again, uh, I like to RP as much as possible, and my intent with this game is to play as uh, a Cabal, because that's what they call our our thing. It's a Cabal. In, in, in sort of a way where I care primarily about the motherland, right? The motherland wor is worth the most, but of course her people matter as well, because without her people, what can the motherland accomplish? Um, not much. So objectives come first, and rescuing agents comes second. If some have to be left behind, then so be it. Now what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to push through, I'm going to close this door. Because I don't like this guy roaming around and turning around and possibly seeing me while I'm in here. I'm not sure how many turns I have safe. We also want to open this door up, and it looks like there's no loot here. Fair enough. Let's move up to these stairs, and maybe we'll get vision up top as well. Pop this open. Ah, uh, no loot. Lots of cocaine, though. I don't know how that doesn't count as loot, but all right, fair enough, fair enough. And now we have some vision up here, but all right, looks like we're in the clear. Looks like we're in the clear. So in that case, Theremin, we're going to send you up. Well, where do we want to go? We want to go up all the way? No, there's intel somewhere here. There's intel over here, and there's intel over here. So Indigo will get that one, and Theremin could come up to get this one. Uh, let's move you up to here. We'll pop that uh, door open. All right, there we go. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, dear lord. Okay, so... Patriot? Но про него ничего не знаем. Или про нее? Нет ничего конкретного. Надо надеяться, что это не ловушка. That's a lot of trust in someone you know nothing about. Okay, so this guy here might see Theremin if he turn. If he's going to turn around and move this way, but I don't know if he'll turn clockwise or counterclockwise. Either way, too much of a risk. So we're gonna just, if I if I could just close that door. Ah, uh, don't mind me. We'll wait until next turn. He'll have a very narrow cone of vision, and I should be able to pop right in there uh, and and deal with that nonsense. And Kodak, 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 Kodiak, Kodiak, we're going to move you up to where? I want to scout some of these other rooms as well, make sure no one's going to pop up on us. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to get Kodiak all the way up over here in cover. Again, we're in enemy territory right now, so we have to be very careful. We're going to use, we don't have... I was tempted to set up Overwatch, but we don't have any silenced weapons among any of these, so let's avoid that. I don't want to pop shots off unless it's absolutely necessary. Uh, I cannot stress how dangerous this game can be when the bullets start to fly. You will lose an agent in a heartbeat, in less than a heartbeat. Now, Theremin, we're going to pop this door open again, and hopefully we won't get spotted. Yeah, we're good. And now we're going to roll in. Oh, wow, I'm glad I... Glad I didn't open this door when he was over there and potentially looking at me. Um, we're going to go in for what's called a takedown. So if I select him, you'll see takedown. Because I have more health than this guy over here, I can take him out. If he had more health than Theremin, then I wouldn't be able to take him out with a takedown. I'd have to shoot him. It costs us a movement or an action point, and it costs us a fire point. And these are both used for various things. Uh, collectively, they're for moving and shooting or pulling off actions like a takedown. And it also costs 50 awareness. Awareness is this little bar below my light blue bar, and the enemies will have one below them as well when you know short shots start ringing out. But uh, what it represents is how aware, obviously, your individuals are, your agents are. It helps them perform actions like takedowns, but it also helps them dodge shots. If when when a gun when bullets start flying, when guns are shooting, they will always hit their target, but the damage might be reduced by cover and the target might dodge. Those are the only ways that a person is safe from damage. These are trained agents and operatives firing, so that makes sense, and it's a really nice touch to the game as well. It really increases the stress level. Now, enough time looking at this confirm flashing at me. Let's move in and karate chop the crap out of this bad boy here. Down he goes. Now, we could opt to remove his body from the scene, but uh, it doesn't look like... Like, if there was somebody patrolling the floor here, or if there was somebody... could be somebody who patrols both floors. I'm wondering, wow, there's nowhere I can put the body, actually. 
So let's just move in and pick up this intel and, and close the door and hope nobody comes back out here. There's no windows or anything, so... Maybe a bit of a risky move? One out of three. Oh, okay, so I think I've spotted all three of them already. One's here. Another one is over here for Indigo to pick up. And what we'll actually do is we're going to move up to here and open that door first just to make sure we don't hop into a surprise. Looks like we're clear. There's a huge blank space here, so we're just going to pop up to this cover. Okay, we're good, we're good. Yeah, there could have literally been somebody sitting there staring at me. <laughs> kind of a risky move, I guess. Uh, but we're good here, and Kodiak, or Kodak, I suppose, can scout this room. Just, I, I actually didn't realize that there was a hole. Not paying enough attention. Someone could have spotted me through up here if there was somebody up here. But uh, looks like we're good. And looks like there's nothing in here either. Not even any loot, it seems. Uh, Kodiak could go pushing up further. Is there anything in this room? There's a lot of blank spaces. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, there's some loot in here. But you know what? Indigo can come get that. Or I kind of want to stick together. Let's, let's get Kodiak in here so we can be a bit more efficient, effective with this floor, as it were, and then we can move up to the next floor. Stick together, work together, and we should be fine. Looks like enemy activity has reduced a fair bit as well, and I'm not really able to hear them or anything, so we should be fine. Typically, you are able to hear the enemy if they're moving around above you or around you. You can hear them, which is really cool. It's like actually using the player's senses to uh, determine threat levels and stuff. Uh, but yeah, we're... Uh, just in case we're going to take cover over here. I should be closing these doors behind me, honestly. And... Oh, would you look at that? There's a little escape route here. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I, I like to play super cautiously with this game. I've... Uh, uh, I tend to not be patient, as I was saying earlier. So I'm going to try and play this as patiently as possible. Alright, that's two out of three. And now, Theremin, you're up, if I'm not mistaken. And you, good sir... I could send him up right now. I really wish I had a heartbeat sensor or something. I feel like I've been abilitized by having access to that late game save mission. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, well that was very lucky that he wasn't looking this way. His patrol takes him there next, but you know what? I can actually get up here and take him down right now. Is Theremin about to be our takedown king? There's a huge blank spot over here. Blank spot, blind spot, you know what I mean. And over here as well. I was just talking about how impatient I am. Let's do it. <laughs> My awareness is so low. If I get shot at, I'm definitely dead. Here we go. Boom. Don't just pan away like that. Show me Theremin and show me this area. All right. Yeah, we look safe. Yukon is in here. We're going to go in there last. I don't want to trigger like a huge gunfight or anything like that before I'm done cleaning out the area. I thought there was more intel up here. Swarm. Ah, oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Okay. That is our turn, though, so let's hit that end turn button. Okay. I got a little scared as to, uh, because of how long that was taking there. All right, let's pick this up. Come on, Kodiak. Hurry up. Got an Estrella and Indigo. Let's scout this room out, I guess. We haven't been in here yet. Let's pop this door open. What do we got? Is that loot? No, that's not loot. Ah, oh, room looks clear. There's no intel or anything. I could move up to here, hope to get a better view around this corner. Yeah, looks clear. And there's this room that's left. The last room over here. Okay, fair enough. Oh, and this room... Now, this is the room that had that intel. Okay, fair enough. Theremin, you're up here. We're not going in here yet. There's this piece of intel over here. Again, let's be cautious. We're gonna move up. We're gonna pop that door open. Assess the threat levels first. I legitimately thought this was a person. <laughs> I am on edge because of this game. Ah, uh, we look like we're in the clear. There's a huge blind spot there. Maybe if we push up to here, we'll be safe from being spotted, but we'll have vision. Maybe. Okay. Looking good. Intel's right there, so we should be able to pick that up next turn. And the activity taking a bit longer than I'd like it to. Oh. I heard movement. I don't know if it was loud enough for you guys to hear it, but I heard footsteps. Now, the thing is, it could actually be civilians out here as well. Because, again, civilians get counted as enemies just to keep us on our toes, to keep us scared. Uh, which I like. I love that. Let's go get this intel. 
Should be the last piece of intel. But there's one piece of loot left, if I'm not mistaken. If I recall the numbers correctly. Could be right around the corner here. I could move up to this spot and get some cover almost all round. Should probably push up to here instead. Yeah. <laughs> I hate when they do that. I hate when they just like dive through glass. Like, no. <laughs> supposed to be top tier covert operations. Well, Black Ops, we're not like <laughs> trying to make a ruckus here. Okay, let's move up. Where I want to get to this door, but I guess Indigo will get there first, right? Yeah, she'll get there first. Let's get her over here, pop this door open, see what's happening on the other side of this. Yeah, it looks like we're in the clear. No, no loot. Okay, Kodiak, in that case, you can go upstairs if you have the movement points for it. You do not. Let's move you towards the stairs at least. Get him up and in, uh, investigating Yukon, arresting Yukon even. That end turn. I'm nervous that it's all going to blow up in my face any minute now. Oh. <clears throat> Isn't that nerve-wracking? She is a civilian, but you never know. It's kind of the point that you don't, you don't ever know. Okay, Indigo, let's pull you through here. Yeah, this is safe. Did I skip a room? No, I saw this one, okay. And Theremin, you could push this way. There's this room over here, so let's push Theremin towards that. Hopefully he doesn't dive through any glass. Oh, I could have opened this door first, damn it. Kodiak, let's get you upstairs, and you... Well, this is where Yukon is, so let's not go there yet. Theremin's going that way, so Kodiak can go up towards this. Oh man, there's glass over here. Someone's looking my way. All right, let's let's tuck up to here. To here. That way we're in cover if if shots do start flying. Okay. All right, we're safe. It looks like that end turn. And just a quick note as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure that story missions and like you know, missions in general, have some degree of randomization, like placement of uh, enemy agents, placement of equipment and stuff. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Not 100%, but uh, pretty sure. Okay, there's nothing over here. We can't even get to this door, which is the next room we want to check. Kodiak's going to check this room, so you know what? Yeah, Theremin can roll on up and move towards checking that room. Fair enough, fair enough. Kodiak... Let's move you up to here, buddy. Pop this door open. Make sure there's nothing else over here that we need to be concerned about. Yeah, no loot or anything. Oh, and we can get... Well, we can already see in here, so is there really a point? And Theremin's about to go through here. Yeah, no, I'd rather pull back over here and check that door. And Let Indigo, you can come now. upstairs as well, potentially. Yeah. So Indigo can get posted at that door, and she can pop the door open when we're about to arrest Yukon. I'm gonna get Kodiak in position as well first. The two doors are in the same room. Suggests to me that we have to do like a breach or something. That would be my concern. Theremin is going to pop this door open from a safe angle. On we go. Yeah, no, we're, we're good. Uh, let's stay in cover though. Ooh, why is that yellow? What was I missing there? Is there loot here? Oh, oh, wow. I'm blind. I nearly missed this loot over here. All right, well, glad I spotted it. There we go. Five for five. Pistol suppressor. A good one to have, considering I have no suppressors. Good stuff. Good job, party elite. Good job. All right, let's get uh, Kodiak over here. I think we're ready to roll out. This room, Theremin can check. Whatever, it's fine. Let's get Kodiak over here. Indigo's ready over there. Let's pop this door. Oh, no, 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 no. I want to be right at the door. Fine, Indigo, you're going to open this door. Oh, there's been a kerfuffle. Um, I I'm going to open the door with Kodiak before I just dive into that room. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. What up? Is that why the ground was highlighted? Oh, my God. I got misled, and then, uh, and then, oh. Okay, we're going to move in for a takedown. Theremin truly is the takedown king right now. 
Hopefully this room is empty otherwise, and that is why vision and angles and all that stuff matters, and patience is key in this game. I'm glad I had that little two-hour preview session to teach me uh, the way as it were, because <laughs> that could have been game over right there. All right, Kodiak, we're going to push you off to the side over here. Oh. Oh, that doesn't look good. Looks like he's already been arrested. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that ain't good. Follow the blood trail. All right. Oh, convenient. We can pick that up. I wish there was an. A oh, there is an actual blood trail. That's so cool. I kind of wish the game hadn't like literally allowed me to click and find it. Then, maybe it's just because it's an early mission. But you can see there's this little trail of blood. And it goes right into here. That's awesome. That's super cool. Okay, so we're done. We're done here. We should maybe move up and secure this area. I don't even know where extraction's happening from, actually. Okay, Theremin's gonna pick up the stuff. And... We got a ladder over here, which is cool. In case... I guess reinforcements arrive. We're okay so far, though. I hope it doesn't, like, just for the sake of causing a rough time, trigger, like, reinforcements or something. Let's pop over here, open this up. Alright, we will get out of here right away. Where is... Evacuation is all the way back here, which is where? I don't recognize it. Oh, cocaine place. Oh, okay. So, these stairs will get us... Okay. Okay. Oh, so that ladder should be pretty conveniently located, or am I mistaken here? Where where the, where the are we? Okay, so that's where the ladder is. That'll get us down over here, and then we'll have to rush across to the stairs here. We're better off going down the main stairs. We're not going to summon it yet. So, when you summon evacuation, it takes three turns to get there, and then it takes three turns before evac gets compromised. And if evac is compromised, then you uh, take a hit to your, I, guess, I think it's called danger level or threat level. And uh, the way that works is, well, it's a part of the overworld. It's part of the strategic layer. I'll get into it a bit more when we get there because it feels like this mission is almost over. Um, so I'll be able to showcase that this session. Um, but so that's a, a reason to make sure you don't compromise your evacuation and uh, that you actually time your evac and, and don't you know rush. It, it, I love the layers that this game brings. I love the complexity that the game brings. Because, uh... It's an espionage game. It should be. There should be so many things coming together. Ooh. Alright, alright. We're going, we're going. Uh, this way, right? Yeah. You know what? I could probably call Evac... No, Theremin's kind of far away. I guess. So Theremin might not make it in time. Let's get Theremin to here, and then next turn... I should maybe call Evac. Get Kodiak to here. And let's get You'll Indigo down to here. I do love that you can do that as well. You can tab between characters as orders have been given. It just makes it so much faster. It feels a lot smoother. I think a, a big issue that a lot of these games have is that uh, it doesn't feel smooth when you're giving orders. It often feels very, like, segmented, you don't have as much flow, whereas here I feel like there's a lot more of that kind of... There's there's a feeling that you actually have real agents on the field, and yeah, it's turn-based, but you can give them a bit more fluidity like this, and I like that. It's good. Oh, I meant to call evac. Well, let's call evac now. Right here. Yep, confirm. Excellent, excellent. Get over here as quick as you can, buddy. Hit that end turn button. Hopefully we don't get, like, spotted at the last minute here. Alright, we're good. Um, I didn't scout this area, did I? Ooh, there is a civilian here. What? Where is he going? He's going back here next. If he sees us, will he... report us? This is a restricted area. I could pop right out and we should be fine. Hmm... Okay, here, here's what we're going to do. I'm so nervous because we haven't actually scouted this area out. And at the same time, I don't want him to turn around and see me and get all... 
like crazy or something and, and, and call for security or something. Alright, we're going to move up and we're going to take cover here. Just in case there's something in this corner. So yeah, let's let's go. Go, 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 go. Okay. Kodiak is should be safe. Indigo, we're going to get you up to here as well. We're right next to extraction, so this should work. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> what was she doing there? Oh, my God. Um, okay, now this is scarier. Oh, no, okay. Cool, Theremin can get out as well. So we should be... <laughs> diving through the window. Or should we just try and break the other one? I could try and break the other one. Just for comedic effect. Nah. Let's not do that. Alright, Thurman, go, 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 go. Davai, davai! <laughs> Alright. Hit that end turn button. Looks like we're home free. He doesn't suspect a thing, because he's a fool. Yeah, he would have looked right... Oh, I'm glad he doesn't notice that this window is now broken. But that could have been trouble for me. That could have been trouble. So evac's going to arrive shortly. We're going to move Don't up, up on me like and that. in. There we go. There we go. Easy. Nice and clean. Just like the KGB always does it. All right. In comes our evac buddy here. Completely unsuspicious. And boom. There we go. We can just evacuate. Confirm. Beautiful. That was that was beautiful. All right, that went a lot more smoothly than I had expected it to. But that's the thing. You just have to be super cautious. If you're not careful, this game will punish you, and it will punish you hard. I hope you guys like more of the kind of thinkers game here. Loot crates are forever. Um, because I'm a big fan of it. Hopefully you guys are as well. Actually, I should say really quickly, if you guys want to see this Let's Play continue, the best way to let me know is by dropping a like and a comment down below. I look at those numbers to get an understanding for what kind of content you guys are interested in, and then I pursue that stuff, because it's all about what you guys enjoy at the end of the day. So I enjoy this, but hopefully you guys do as well. And we're about to dive into a very, I hope, it dives into like the overworld view, where it can get into some more intricate stuff. Um, but yeah, mission success, I would say so. Five out of five, three out of three. No danger, no no harm, no foul. Chapter 1, Above Top Secret. We received orders to arrest Agent Yukon for selling classified material to American intelligence. Unfortunately, a group of militia mercenaries beat us to the scene and killed the culprit before we could get to him. We need to find out who hired the militia and what was so valuable about these materials that somebody decided to kill Yukon for it. Hmm... Ah, I see. Uh, use stealth to get your objective without exposing your squad to unnecessary danger. Damn right. That's what we did there. All right, we've got uh, a bulletproof vest. We've got a Model 870, some light armor. Ooh, openly hostile. So when something is openly hostile, or hostile, however that's said, um, it means that if you go out wearing that, it doesn't matter if you're in a restricted area or not. If you get spotted by at least security, I don't know about civilians, but if you get spotted, you are immediately going to trigger the alarm. So you just have to be wary about that. You can use that for like your heavy hitters, keep them wearing that openly hostile equipment. It can be armor, it can be weapons, all sorts of stuff. Like if you go in with a heavy MG, I think that's also openly hostile. So uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. Anyway, we got an Estrella and we got a pistol suppressor, which I will apply ASAP. We also got some secret documents, new agent candidate, referee. I like his I like his look. I like his bow tie look. Uh, trade contact, a cleaner. Ooh, interesting. And a new secret file, theory of conspiracy. I want to dive into that right away. But take a look at our glorious tactical summary here. New perks available, new training for Theremin as well. Theremin did fantastically. Gonna hit that continue button, and we are at вообще не должно там быть. Это патриот их напустил. Может, он хотел, чтобы мы туда попали перед ними? Я сомневаюсь. Но местные органы расследования должны вам сказать, кто нанял их дружков. Должны? Наверняка скажут. И лучше добровольно. I gotta learn some Russian. I'm liking this. This is this feels good. I like that they went with Russian with English subtitles rather than English with a thick Russian accent. I would not like to play game where people talk like this all the way through. All right. So danger. This is something I mentioned, I believe, during the, the mission. Uh, for example, when evac is compromised, you get a plus 30 hit to danger. Your danger rating goes up because of prisoners you might have, because you might have moles in your agency, um, you might have flubbed a mission, it could be anything. And if your danger ticks up and it gets to this red zone, then the threat level is high. Once that 
gets all the way maxed out, if I recall correctly, you get raided and that costs you money, et cetera, et cetera. And so you need to move hideouts often if your danger level is consistently ticking up and that costs money. So there's, there's a lot of really cool systems coming in on this sort of layer as well. Now, over here, first things first, we're gonna go into the crew quarters and uh, assign some of those perks and whatnot. So Theremin, you absolute beast. What a boss with his hands there. So let's see, what uh, what training should we give him? Now, we've got trainings and we've got perks. Some perks come inherently with the character. So we're able to, he's got two secret perks which we might reveal at some point. And then we've got one that we can assign ourselves. So Cold-Blooded decreases cooldown on the focus ability. Uh, peripheral vision, Overwatch field remains circular in a wider radius. I wish I'd shown off the uh, peripheral or how Overwatch worked, but maybe in the next mission. Basically, it's a radius up to a, it's a 360 degree uh, coverage area up to a certain radius, and then it becomes a cone. And so you have to specify the direction that Overwatch is going to take. Uh, what Peripheral Vision does is it makes that radius a bit bigger. Um, free Diver, protect from harmful effects of gas clouds except loss of vision. What? I haven't even experienced these mechanics, even with the uh, like early access stuff I was doing before. An actor, disguise cannot be detected. You know what? You know what? The way uh, Comrade Sokolov here um, was performing with his like karate chopping. I'm gonna say he's an actor. So we can send him in in disguise and he can go around taking people down. So yeah, let's, let's go with that. We've got two secret perks and we've got a training available. It's an empty slot. We can give him contact tactics, which gives us a blinding laser. Okay, well, first of all, what do we have? As a member of the Spetsnaz, we just have a proficiency with the, oh, I, I'm not, is that TK Bak or TK B A K? That is a weapon proficiency. Have, being proficient with a weapon gives us faster reload times, cheaper headshots, and uh, you can modify your weapon. So you can see with this AK, if we had any mods, we could actually, you know, get them on the weapon because um, Theremin here is proficient with it. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to change your equipment or anything. I'm gonna give you a training. Uh, so, Blinding Laser interrupts enemy overwatch and makes characters unable to shoot during the next turn. Pain Stimulus. When hit, this agent receives a bonus to damage from firearms. Uh, urban Operations and Path Upon healing other characters. This character also restores a small amount of HP or basic firearms drill. Just to make him proficient with more weapons. I think we're gonna go with Contact Tactics. Let's train that. It'll take some time. It'll take one day and 12 hours. That's a long time. Damn. Well, too late now. It costs us a little bit of money as well, but I mean, you have to upgrade your agents, otherwise, what's the point? Uh, we only have a new perk on Indigo, that's fine. Uh, Revenant increases critical timer, agent takes longer to bleed out. Dancer decreases awareness cost of dodging. League Pitcher, throwing grenades no longer ends turn. And Quick Recovery increases HP recovery and hide up. You know what, we're gonna do a little bit of the stereotypical uh, Soviet spy thing, and we're gonna say, Sofia Zaitsev. Sofia Zaitsev? Zaitsev? Someone tell me. Uh, trained, you know, in ballet. Why not? <laughs> Why not? So yes, dancer. Decreases awareness cost of dodging. That'll be, that'll come in handy. We will have her then be a close quarters type individual. And maybe let's give her pistol, the French Dow here. Oh, she's not proficient with it. Oh no, she, she is. Why am I? Oh no, sorry. That wasn't proficiency. That was just that it's new. Damn. And this can't get a pistol suppressor, that's too bad. The VZ-61, VZ-61 for uh, my American watchers, and perhaps other nations as well, I don't know. Um, okay, that's too bad. Marlin, Walker, Falcon, these are our other agents that haven't seen any action yet. And Kodiak, let's see, body engineer talent. Faster body engineering, that's something we'll unlock later. Interrupt talent, bonus experience for interrupt jobs. Not 100% sure what that is. And loyal, this agent is loyal and impervious to enemy influence, of course, he's me. What can we get? Custom gear improves reload times, faster movement increases movement range, cold blooded decreases cooldown on the focus ability, and mild paranoia. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go with mild paranoia because that's so accurate to how I approached that last mission. So, mild paranoia. Uh, again, this is what I mean by I like to kind of RP. I like to role play all these kinds of decisions. If you're looking for a min maxer, I'll be honest, I'm not a min maxer. Um, 
Another thing I really like about this game is how it does stats. You can see we've got things like circulatory, sensory, respir respiratory, and motoric. And if you look at stat info, it'll tell you what this stuff actually translates to in a more gamey sense. But it actually feels like a dossier where you're, you know, you've got an agent and they have these numbers that tell you how good or bad they are at something. And this is where it gets a little bit more gamey. Of course, it has to a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a neat touch. Okay, enough here, I think. We don't want to hire a referee just yet. He's from the Mossad. What's the buckshot ability? Mm, I thought you were able to... Or is that just when... Yeah, okay, so you can only check on your own people. But as you can see, like, Indigo being from the Stasi has this ability, Zen, which improves character awareness regeneration. Oh, that'll work nicely with uh, Dancer. She'll be our, like, dodging mastermind. Uh, a freelancer here coming in with Warren Ally, which is super cool. It's like telling another buddy that some, you're, be, you're about to be shot at or whatever. Alright, anyways, let's not spend any more time there. We don't need the infirmary. No one's hurt because we had a flawless mission. At the workshop, we could get... What could we get? Analytics expansion, additional investigation jo board job slot. Words are failing me right now. Let's go with recon equipment. We don't need expansions just yet. Let's go with recon equipment. 1100 bucks and 8 hours. Develop that upgrade. And I don't think there's anything to craft just yet. We could get some lock picks going, I guess. It'll take 12 hours. Let's get... Uh, Falcon. You're going to stay here for the next mission. Let's get you crafting some lock picks. Cost us some money. It'll take 12 hours, but we have... A decent chunk of money right now. Let's, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that. And analytics. This is where stuff starts to get super juicy. Super duper juicy. All right, first off, I just need to check my uh, agents real quick and see if anybody has a perk that makes them particularly ideal for uh, for recon work and intelligence gathering. Seems not. So we'll get Marlin or let's get Walker on the job. I, I see no like reason to have a preference. Yeah, sure. We'll get Walker on the job. Analytics. Um, can I... Oh, I need more intel before I can work it. I see. Sorry. Um, so, we're going to move into the investigation board. And this is another fantastic layer of this game. So, we've got the Theory of Conspiracy dossier, the file. And in it, we have a lot of intel already. So, first things first. A. The Red Herring op. Op at Aqueduct was a success. Our men said the event generated some interest, but their CEO recommends a reinforcement. What do you think? B. Let's keep it simple. Where is the nearest Artemis unit stationed? A. Not too far. Redacted. B. Ah, good. Can you tell them to dress in black and scare the shit out of people? Thanks for demonetizing me, game. It will reassure them that they're on the right track. A. Sure, I can do that. Should we do the disappearing coin number? B. Only if they're defiant or start asking intelligent questions. Throw them off balance, but not more than necessary. So here, we're looking for a place. Uh, so Aqueduct is a place, right? So there you go, there's our clue. Now we're done with our main dossier, our lead, and we don't actually have any intel. I collected three pieces of intel, what do you mean I don't have any intel? What are you, what are you saying? Hmm. That, that's a little un unfortunate. I guess the intel I collected was not related to this. Damn, I was looking forward to showing the whole Cork board and pins and 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 stitching stuff together. Well, you can see it in my two-hour gameplay video, but I was, I was hoping to show it here. Damn, that's a little unfortunate. Well, that's fine. We've looked at all this stuff. We're gonna head over to the world map, and this is where things get super juicy. This is where you're going to see what enemy agents are up to. You're going to see when someone's trying to find your hideout, and you have to rush over and and shut them down. For now, though, we have our special mission, which is I guess the story mission. Priority missions are labeled like that over at Vladivostok. So over here. Uh, we want to, yeah, perform the special mission. The militia we encountered were likely moonlighting as hired muscle. We'll find out for whom. So on this special mission, we shall send Kodiak, and we shall send Indigo. I guess Kodiak, Indigo, and Theremin are going to be our core team. Um, we should send... We'll send Marlin over as well. Oh, I can only send two. Oh, I see. So it'll take us four hours to get there and two people to do it. So let's start the job with Kodiak and Indigo. Again, our core team members just by virtue of being on that first mission. And, uh, yeah, let's, let's move in. So again, time moves forward in hours here. That's the scale we're playing at. So I guess the game doesn't happen over years or, or anything like that, but over, over days and weeks instead. Now, local police over at Vladivostok, the target area around Vladivostok. 
the Militsa chief vanished, arrested for possession of unregistered foreign currency. Despite his replacement's efforts to dismiss us, we still made him give up the confiscated currency, and we got the name of the RST, Uglov. Okay, well done, we earned some experience, good stuff. And now you can see there are a couple of things that we have to check out. There's some suspicious activity going on at Irkutsk. We've got some suspicious activity over here. Not that it's like highlighting for me. Come on now. Oh, come on. Don't don't be like this game. Uh, I should I should have made note of this earlier, but this is still an early access build, I believe. So there might be some bugs and glitches here and there that will hopefully get patched out with like a day one patch. So this, for example, a little unfortunate. But it's okay, not the end of the world. Uh, suspicious activity here, here, and here as well. I should probably investigate some of this stuff. We could send people out. We also have this Czech currency main mission, foreign currency. All foreign currency in the USSR must be registered. Let's see whether we're dealing with pros. So investigate a possible lead on the person who hired the Gukos, Mercs. There is an enemy agent over here by the name of Sapphire. We've got two agents on site. I can only send one. Who else is going to go but the big boss himself, Kodiak? Let's get you started on the job. But before we do that, let's send somebody out to Irkutsk. Marlin is another field agent we're going to say. Going to try and keep a track of all this, like who gets to be a field agent, who gets to stay behind a desk, things like that. Um, so Marlin over there. I don't want to send Indigo too far out. That's eight hours to get there. Anything could go wrong over here while checking currency. We don't know how long that'll actually... Oh, it'll take 12 hours? Okay, so then we have time to get there and hopefully get back. You know what? Let's end Indigo instead. Can I cancel that flight? Don't know if I can. Yeah, don't know if I can. All right, so let's get Indigo moving to... Uh, what takes us less time? Omsk, I guess. Let's move you over here and let's move Walker over there. Sure, he gets a bit of a field job today just because we're short. I'm gonna fly out, check all our corners. Recon equipment unlocks the tactical recon job, allowing to gain tactical advantage during missions. Excellent, let's go back to the facility real quick, see if there's anything else we'd want to uh, upgrade. More hideout candidates discovered on the world map for when we have to escape, get out of here and find another hideout. Um, forger facility, unlocks the forger facility, cash forging, character customization, and identity. We can pop open character customization and start getting like some patrons or name suggestions in the comments to get, uh, you know, a bit more of a personal attachment, I suppose. Hideout perimeter detectors, maximum danger increased, effectively reducing the risk of raids and related losses. I like the sound of that. Um, let's get the forger facility first. Thousand bucks, ten hours, not too bad. In three hours, we'll have some lock picks available as well. And uh, what else is going on here? Scout known prison locations, Irkutsk, Sakhalin, and Vorkuta. Where's Sakhalin? Oh, this is it, isn't it? And I can't click on it. Oh, come on. Maybe a reload or something will, will fix it for me. We'll find out. For now, though, let's continue this investigation, and let's continue investigating these other suspicious zones over here. Let's go. All right. Prisoner located. Thank God it wasn't at the place we couldn't go to. The chief of Vladivostok Militia, who had suddenly been found guilty of accepting bribes in foreign currency, has been located in one of our labor camps. Our status alone should enable us to interrogate the suspect and find out who hired him and his men on that fateful night. Beautiful. So is that what we're up to right now? Ooh. Okay, cool. We don't need to pause. Let's keep our investigation going. So we're at Irkutsk with the labor camp. Here's what we're going to do. So nothing was found at Omsk or Vorkuta. I'm definitely pronouncing that wrong. Pact of Silence. Coax the labor camp staff to reveal the arrested police chief to us. All right, camp guards and their unknown overlords try to keep Uglov from us. And deal with them the KGB way. That sounds good to me. Marlin's already there. And Indigo is going to follow through. That'll be the two for two. Begin that job. It'll take four hours for Indigo to get there, but that's okay. So this is where it gets super interesting. You're managing time. You're managing all these flights. You have this threat level that in the future will consistently be pushing up and up. It's some really cool stuff. It all comes together extremely nicely, and it's extremely stressful when it gets to it. Uh, I'm a little worried about our cash flow, if I'm perfectly honest. I don't know... I don't know how long that'll hold up, so I don't want to waste too much money if I don't have to. I don't think I need to increase agent limit just yet. Um, optimize printing press for forging more cash. Oh, hold on now. Let's go to the forger, and let's get somebody forging cash. 
Uh, you know what? It might be time to actually hire another agent. Let's get referee, buddy. Um, you, you're not too expensive. Ooh, higher danger, plus 60. Oh, that's so cool because we don't know if he's a legitimate agent or if he's been planted there by the enemy or if he's a mole or... Oh, I like it. All right, well, we're going to hire him. It's going to make our danger go up a little bit, but it's a risk we're going to have to take at some point. So we hire referee, and we're going to get you working on the forgery right now. So referee, assign you here. We'll get 20 bucks an hour, so that's nice, plus 60. And in that case, let's go back to the workshop and get the optimized printing press because that is literally printing money. It'll cost us, but you got to spend money to make money. Develop that upgrade. Go back to the world map over here and see what comes of this whole situation. Ooh, foreign currency at Vladivostok. As suspected, no trace of the currency in the official system. We're not dealing with amateurs, that's for sure. All right. Oh, our agent infiltrated enemy cell in Vladivostok. Sapphire has been revealed. Is uh, Okay, so Sapphire, identity Pavel Vizek. Cool. In 11 hours, he's going to have a new identity. We don't know anything about him beyond that. All right, all right. At least we've identified somebody. And can we do anything about that? This is a hideout candidate. That's good to know, but nothing... We can do there. Well, we're going to move into Irkutsk and hopefully get some action in there. It'll take 15 hours. Hope nobody dies while that's happening. I wonder if I should send some more agents over here. You don't just have to send agents uh, for a job. We could actually send, for example, Kodiak here just for backup to perform some other activities. Walker, you're staying at the desk, buddy. Let's travel you out here, Kodiak. And uh, we'll see what we can do if there's anything we need to do over here. Oh, we'll reveal a secret in one day. Oh, crap. We've got more stuff happening. Let's get Walker out there again. Three hours it'll take him. Falcon is busy right now, I think. No. No, Falcon's fine. So Falcon can actually go out as well. Investigate Kuibyshev. Ooh, enemy recon. Oh, that's not good. So points of interest progress. Uh, so I think the longer we wait here, the more information we'll have available to actually perform various actions. Like right now, I can go in for an assault with one agent and hope for the best, or we can do some tactical recon. It'll take two agents, but that'll allow us to deploy tactical options like snipers and scouts, uh, or spotters, I should say. That is, if we have them. Uh, we, we don't have them unlocked yet or anything. I think we'll stay here for a little bit longer and uh, see what going down that bar does. So enemy scout will da will increase danger by 51 and compromise any cabal agents present in this location. God damn. All right, so we need to make sure that... Uh, we need to make sure that uh, we don't allow that to happen. I wonder if I should trigger tactical recon. Get Kodiak in here. Use Walker and Kodiak and, uh, and yeah, get them performing some some recon duty over here. Let's go. Because that's dangerous. Plus 51 danger, that's dangerous. We're going to pause some cash real quick and just show you this situation over here. So you can see current danger is now 60 because we hired... Uh, uh, who, what's his name? Our forger buddy. So uh, that's... You know, we, we can't have that go up by 51. That'll be really bad for us. Ooh, Pact of Silence, Irkutsk. So rattling some cages and making credible threats soon caused one of the lieutenants to spill the beans. Uglov was to be isolated on orders from a Gru operative called Snowcat. He's the one mentioned in the Yukon file. What Yukon file? Okay, oh, I see, I see, I see. All right, 10 XP for Marlin and Indigo. Good stuff, ladies, good stuff. Oh, crew quarters, training complete. Theremin is ready for action now. He's got contact tactics with blinding laser and pain stimulus. I love it, buddy, good job. Let's get him moving to Novos Novosibirsk, Novosibirsk? I am butchering these names. Always eager to learn, though, so feel free to teach me. Always eager to learn. Let's get Theremin over here. He is a superior agent. We're going to send him over. And over at Irkutsk, we will reveal a secret in 13 hours. I'm quite curious what that might be. And in 10 hours, enemy recon is going to complete, so we need to be very quick over there after that tactical recon of our own is finished. We're going to get uh, Falcon here moving from Kuibyshev to Vorkuta. Begin that job, and I think I kind of want to send, well, I kind of want to send Indigo up here. It'll take her nine hours, but it's worth it. We need to investigate all the suspicious activity before we get found out and caught out. But look at that, all these agents flying around, top secret 
objectives and missions going on. Tactical recon at Novosibirsk completed. Beautiful. We can move in for the assault right now, but we're going to pause it first. Right, because we can move in for the assault. We completed this. We weren't... Oh, I see. I see. The way this works is if the bar... The further along the bar goes, the less time you're going to have to complete these things. So if it's over here, that means you have enough time to complete this. And the reason why I couldn't was because I only had two agents available and this needed three agents. Or maybe it was one agent available and it needed two agents. Same for tail agent. Okay, that's super cool. That's super cool. Okay, better understanding of what's going on here. But we can move in for the assault. We can only take one agent. We might go in with Kodiak, I guess. But uh, to be perfectly honest, unfortunately, this is where we're going to be calling it a session because we have hit that hour mark. I do like to keep these things an hour long at most, if and when possible. Uh, and this just kind of happened to line up rather perfectly. I hope you guys had a good time. I hope you guys enjoyed watching my playthrough of Phantom Doctrine thus far, and I hope you guys are interested in watching more, because I certainly am interested in covering more. Again, the best way to let me know is by dropping a like and a comment down below. I look at those numbers to understand what you guys like, and to be perfectly honest, it also helps the channel because of how YouTube algorithms work. As always, I want to give a massive thanks to all of my patrons who support me on a month-to-month -month basis. It makes a huge difference in keeping the channel alive and running smoothly. And to all of you as well, thank you very much for joining me on this adventure. I hope to, uh, I hope to get some bullets flying in the next session at the very least. Until then, though, das vidanya.